In this video I'm going to show that linear phase filters preserve the shape of a filtered signal and I'm going to explain why that's important for certain applications and also I'm going to show how linear phase filters achieve this. Um, the code that I'm using is going to be available up at this WordPress site so if you search for linear phase filters you'll find it and I'll also put a link to it in the description part of the YouTube video. So let me start off by synthesizing a, a signal and I'm going to synthesize a signal that has uh, two sinusoidal components in it um, and I'm also synthesizing in a separate signal which is the same signal with noise added into it okay so let me just plot those signals first of all and there they are these are the time domain representations of the signal and the blue signal is my clean signal which is just the sum of the two sinusoids and the red is my noisy signal which is basically just the blue signal with noise added to it now if I just go back into the script I'll show you the frequency content of the noisy signal so I'll just evaluate this part of the code and we can see here that this is the magnitude spectrum of the noisy signal uh, we've got two sinusoidal components one at a frequency of 0.2 pi radians per sample and the other one at 0.4 pi radians per sample um, and this uh, noise band here is the noise that has been added to the signal so the noise occupies a very specific uh, frequency range what I'm going to do now is I'm going to filter out this noisy signal using a, a, a non-linear filter first of all and then a linear filter and we'll compare the results so switching back into the uh, script again um, I've got a, here's, here's my filter being designed um, I'm using a Chebyshev filter design and I'm also getting the output which I'm labeling as Y underscore I I R. Um, I'll also ev I'll evaluate all this code here and um, we'll just see the frequency response of the system and also the output. So let me just evaluate that and we'll run through the code. So by evaluating that we're plotting the uh, magnitude response of the filter shown in red and we can see that if this magnitude response was, e was applied to the to the signal or rather the signal was applied to the system with that frequency response we would be removing the noise and when I hit the space bar we will see um, the result of that in the frequency domain so by filtering the noisy signal we're left with the two green uh, sinusoidal components which are the sinusoidal components that are present in the original signal now the thing is that 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 filter did not preserve the phase relationship between these two sinusoidal components and that changes the time domain signal so let me show you the time domain signal and here it is just shown in green okay so there's my filtered signal shown in green and we can see that it doesn't have the same shape I'm just going to hit the spacebar again to remove the original noisy signal and that just makes things a little bit clearer so we have the original signal that had no noise and that has this shape here as shown in the blue signal by filtering with a non-linear filter the shape is no longer preserved now that can be have important consequences depending on the application certain applications it's not important to preserve the shape but for other ones it is so for example if you consider the case where imagine this blue signal was a physiological signal uh, so a signal some signal coming from the body and a healthcare professional is analyzing this signal and they know that if the patient is healthy that the, sh the, sh the shape of the waveform should look like this blue waveform so they're used to seeing this blue shaped waveform and if they get something different well then they assume that there is something wrong with the patient now just by the fact of filtering out the noise we have changed the shape and therefore a healthcare professional could make the wrong diagnosis um, Another situation where it can be important is if the signal, the original signal, is being used to control something. For example, imagine the situation where the blue signal was being able to was being used to control the height of a piston um, or some other actuator. So, the the amplitude of the signal directly controls the height of a piston. Now, just by filtering again we're going to have a situation that in a machine or some other system the piston is now being adjusted to the incorrect height every cycle and that could have dire consequences depending again on the system that it's being used to control so 
A solution to this is to use um, non-linear, or sorry, is to use linear filters. And linear filters will preserve the overall shape of the signal. So let me just run through some code to, to show you a, a linear filter in action. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to show you a plot of the magnitude and phase response of the IOR filter in a separate figure. So let me just evaluate this piece of code. And we can see here, this is the magnitude response, which was shown in red on the lower plot in the previous figure. And down here is our phase response. And um, the way to identify whether a system is, has a linear or nonlinear phase response is if the, the phase response has these curved lines in it, like that, well then you know that the response of the filter is, is non-linear. So I'll show you uh, the frequency response of a, a linear phase system for comparison later on. Uh, so let me just get back into the code and show you that in action. And if I scroll down here, um, you can see I'm designing uh, uh, an FIR filter, which is inherently uh, uh, has a linear phase. Uh, well. It's it's easy to design FIR systems which have uh, a linear phase, uh, not so easy for um, an IIR filter. And we're going to just evaluate this piece of the code where we're basically filtering the signal with the FIR filter coefficients. And then I'm going to show you the output of the filter and also the frequency response of the filter. So let me just evaluate, um, let me just evaluate this part of the code. And we can see here um, on our uh, figure that we have a plot of the magnitude response of the I of the FIR filter shown in black. And it's the, it's a stop band filter as well, so it's removing the uh, frequency components in around that frequency range. And more importantly, up at the top is our filtered signal, which is shown in black. And you should be able to see that the um, the filtered signal has a very similar shape to the clean signal. Um, so if we zoom in, maybe in a couple of cycles, that'll even be clearer. Uh, but you can see there that it's following the shape of the blue signal very, very well. So for the case where you apply a linear phase filter, you preserve the overall shape of the signal. Uh, now, again, whether that's required is depends on the application. Uh, for a lot of audio applications, uh, if you wanted to remove noise, you could use an IIR or an FIR filter um, because our, ear, our hearing system is not sensitive to phase differences, particularly for sinusoids that are separated uh, a lot in frequency. Um, but just be aware that sometimes you do need to um, use linear phase filters in certain situations uh, in, in order to preserve the overall shape. Let me just go into the script now, and uh, what I just want to show you now is a comparison of the two uh, system frequency responses in that second figure, figure number two. So we can see the magnitude response of the linear filter shown in green and the nonlinear filter in blue. And uh, we see they're both stop band filters, so we're moving frequencies around here. Um, but the interesting part is really the uh, phase response of both filters. Um, the linear filter phase response is uh, linear. Well, sort of. Um, you look at this and we see that there are uh, lots of straight lines which would be uh, uh, linear. But it, this sawtooth waveform isn't linear. Now, that can cause a bit of confusion. Uh, and what I want to do is just zoom on a certain section just to try and explain that. Um, if I were to draw a straight line um, following any one of these, we can see that the, the slope of those straight lines uh, are all the same, so each of these sections here are all the same. Um, but if we were to take a, a point anywhere along any of these straight lines, so let's take this point here, and if we were to subtract, in this case, if we were to subtract uh, minus 2 pi, so if we were to subtract rather, if we were to subtract 2 pi, um, we would land on this straight line. Similarly, if we were to take a point over here and were to subtract um, 4 pi, we would land again on the straight line. Now, the significance of that is that um, a phase shift of, for example, minus 
1.853 is equivalent to a phase shift of minus 1.853 uh, minus 4 pi or indeed minus 8 pi or plus 2 pi. So when we plot the phase spectrum uh, we show the phase response between a range of values of, uh, in, well in MATLAB's case, between minus pi and pi. Um, and that's because it's not important once we have the phase shift within that range we can predict what any phase shift would be if we just add uh, any integer multiple of 2 pi to that value. So just be aware of that. Um, so the sawtooth waveform isn't of course linear but the phase response is uh, linear. And let's just finish up now by running through some examples just to highlight why uh, a linear phase response filter does preserve the shape. Um, so far we've kind of covered the very key points and the key point is that uh, linear phase filters preserve the overall shape. So I'm just going to spend some time just running through how that's managed. Uh, so this will be a less important part of the, the presentation but let's go back into the script and uh, take a look at some code. So just down here what I'm doing is I'm synthesizing two new sinusoids X1 and X2 X1 is a frequency of 3 and X2 is a frequency of 6 so it's twice the frequency of X2 and I'm going to plot each of those waveforms down here so let me just evaluate this part of the code and um, we'll see what it produces so that's X1 at the top X2 at the bottom and then the sum of these two waveforms shown and we can see that at time t equal to 0 we get a value of 2 in the combined waveform because if we add this sample with this sample both of them are 1 uh, to produce this amplitude of 2 here at time t equal to 0 and what I'm going to do now is just uh, apply a phase shift so we're going to add uh, minus pi over 2 to both of these um, signals and we'll evaluate this piece of the code just want to put in this OR to plot in red. So let's just evaluate that now. So just notice that I have this pause here, so when I evaluate um, we won't see the plots until I hit the spacebar. So that's still the original sinusoids. And when I see hit the spacebar, what you're going to do is see the phase shift being applied. So there's a phase shift applied to both sinusoids of minus pi over 2. So that will have the effect of basically shifting this uh, maximum, local maximum or peak by pi over 2 which is uh, equates to a quarter of a waveform. Um, so we should expect to see the, the peak uh, arrive somewhere here and also at the lower plot we should see the peak shift to the right by one quarter of a waveform. So let's just hit the spacebar and see if that happens. Okay so we can see that that's happened and we can see that the peaks because of that phase shift the peaks are no longer aligned and now when we sum those two waveforms together we produce this red waveform and the blue is the uh, the, the, the signal that was there from the, the previous iteration of this and we can see that the f waveform shape are no longer preserved okay now the way we correct that is to apply uh, a phase shift that would ensure that the peaks will be aligned. And to do that, we should apply a phase shift of pi to this higher frequency component. So let's just go back into the um, plot and just do that, or back into the script and do that. So we'll apply a phase shift of pi in this case, okay? And we will plot that one in green, okay? So if I evaluate this code now, what I expect to see is for a phase shift to be applied but for the overall shape to be preserved. So I'll have to hit the spacebar to see the changes. But I expect this peak to stay in the same, this location. This other peak should be shifted to be aligned with this peak. There we go. And we get an overall uh, combined signal of the green one shown here. We can see the shape of the green waveform uh, matches that of the blue waveform and this is essentially what um, linear phase filters do. They shift the, the sinusoidal components, they change the phase but they change it in such a way 
that the overall shape is preserved. Uh, so we might just run through one final example um, just to uh, make sure that this makes some sense. Um, but I'm basically just doing the same thing except I'm going to use uh, frequency components that aren't um, related. So the other one was uh, 6 Hz which was uh, a multiple of 2. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter that um, we use that. We could Let's see, let's get rid of the pause again. So the phase relate that frequency relationship doesn't have to exist. So if I evaluate this, we have our new shaped signal. Okay. What I'm going to do is put back in that pause. I'm going to add in the phase shift of minus pi over 2. Add minus pi over 2 again. We'll change the colour down here to be red. We'll evaluate this part of the code. When I hit the spacebar, we should see this top waveform had shifted and the bottom waveform had shifted. Uh, now, the, f the relationship between the peaks is not maintained, so the result is a, a waveform that is a different shape. Now, what I want to do is to be able to update the phase uh, of the higher frequency components so that the peak of the higher frequency will be aligned with the peak of the lower frequency. And to do that we can use the following. Um, we need to update it in a, a linear way. So if we divide this one by 3, which is the frequency of this component here, and multiply it by 5, that should ensure that the phase relationship is updated so that the the peaks of both waveforms are aligned. I'm going to change that to green and we'll evaluate that piece of code and hopefully see that the overall shape is preserved. Now I still need to hit the spacebar before you'll see that but what we should see now is that the peak of this one will be aligned with this one and there we can see it. The green waveform has the same shape as the original blue waveform. So hopefully that explains just how linear phase filters achieve that. So just by updating the phases, we're keeping the 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 position, I suppose, of the maximums of the signals in the same position, or of the positions of the maximums of the sinusoids, rather, in the same position. So when they're summed, they preserve the overall uh, original shape. Okay. Um, Thanks for your attention on that. Uh, hopefully it made some sense.